All right, so let's go crazy here, right? We've already built this kind of method of looking at the months kind of laid out linearly. What if I want to look at this as animation, right? That's another way that I might want to consider how to examine these. Let's make another container. I'm going to follow the same rules. I'm going to go ahead and get this per, uh, a size of 200 by 200. Since I already made this thing, I'm going to copy it. There's no reason not to. Let's bring it over here and paste it into our network. Now, a bunch of things are missing, right? Because a bunch of the references are broken. That's all right. The network's already built, and that's really what we care about. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump that in here. Uh, we need that table, so let's go back and grab our table here. We'll grab this guy. We'll bring him over. Add him to our network. Let's attach it to a null because null one is already a part of a bunch of these expressions that we've written. So here, instead of this, I can look at just null one. I'm going to go ahead and change this, right? Instead of looking at digits, I'm going to let it look just at one right now. Excellent, so I can see here that January is there. And I already know that I, this is going to be not quite right. Right, because really what I need to think about doing is I need to think about how I'm going to animate these two circles. And I can't really animate these two circles by referencing a table. I mean, there's, there are ways that I could do that, certainly. Um, but really to kind of find the thing that I want, right, the thing that's going to be the most interesting to me, um, I have to think about that a little bit differently. Right? I almost need something more like a wave. Right, I need the graph. That would really be the ultimately the most useful way to think about this. So let's actually let's do that. Let's make the graph. We'll go ahead and use a select. In fact, we're going to use two selects. In this first select, let's add, uh, isolate just the high column. So I'm going to extract columns by index. And I want uh, index 1 here and 1 down here. And over here, I'm going to do the same thing, index, and I'd like 2 and 2. Right? I want the highs, I want the lows. Next, I want to convert that into a graph. I want to put that into a chop. This still isn't right, right? Because I don't want a channel per row. I want to do uh, a single channel. My first row is going to be names, and my column is values. And now I have a graph, if I turn on my dots, for each of those points. Oh, and I can see here that I missed my eval. I'm missing one of my important ingredients. Let's come back here, and let's, uh, let's actually grab these. You know what, let's grab this whole shenanigan, because that's actually what we want. Everything is going to be so grumpy for a second, but there we go. All right, so we've got this guy. Let's make a copy of him. Now I have both my highs and my lows. If I merge those together, I should see a graph that is my highs and my lows. That is fantabulous. Let's make a little more room. I'm going to rename those because it doesn't hurt to have some names that are going to be actually uh, legible for me. I'm going to call it high and low. And I'm going to take advantage of a chop uh, that's really quite lovely, and that's the lookup chop. The lookup chop allows me to provide a table. Oops. Ay 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 ay. Uh, I'm going to provide a table to look at. And then if I use a constant, for example, we can see how this works. It allows me to scrub through that table, right? So this lets me move from data point to data point in our table, choo, choo, choo. right? A way for us to think about how to do that is we could use a speed, and we'll use a constant to drive that speed, right? Because our constant is going to allow us to set the rate at which uh, we accelerate. So, for example, if we call this like 0.1 maybe, right, we can see that we're chugging right through our samples here. 
And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and in my speed, I'm going to limit us. I'm going to make us loop. And so we're going to loop from 0 to 1. So once we get all the way up to 1, we're going to wrap back around to 0, which is, I think, pretty much what I want. right? Because in this case, 0 to 1 is going to take us through all of our samples. And this will take us all the way back around. OK. Next, I'm going to go ahead and attach this to a null. And we're going to reference everything out of the null. Because you know what? Chances are we're going to have to drive something else. We almost always end up wanting to add something upstream. Let's go ahead and view this. And let's build those relationships. So here in high. and in low. Oops, I did those in the same operator. Yowza. Second time is the charm. This one. All right. Looking pretty good. That's interesting. Let's take a look at our values over here. Choo, choo, choo. This is pretty good. This is pretty all right. I am noticing that this is uh, pretty linear, right? Like it's got a particular kind of feeling to it. Um, just for fun games and profit, right? I might actually want to come in here and uh, take this. I think I want to filter it. And I don't want to do a lot of filtering, but I would like to smooth it just to skosh. And we'll go ahead and turn this down, maybe like 0.44 or something. All right. Now I'd love it if my, my names could change here too, right? That would be really quite great if I could cycle through the months. Well, we can do that also, right? We just need to apply some math. And the math that we need to apply is we actually want to go in from the range of uh, 1 to 12, right? Because we want to go through 1 to 12. And next, what we'd like to do is we'd like to go ahead and set this to be integers. And let's round. Actually, let's use the floor. And we should see us now count all the way up to 12 and then wrap back down. So this is working like a charm. Let's go ahead and let's, uh, so we only have one place to call things from. Let's add a merge. because I like tidy referencing. And you should too. No, no. You, you do what you want. You do what makes sense for you. Excellent. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use Chan1 here to drive the index row. July, August. Oh, we're skipping January, December rather. I bet actually what we want to do here is let's use round. Oh, that goes a little bit fast. That's not quite right. Um, but if we spent a little time, we could finagle that until we found the right kind of combination of getting that speed working just right. More to the point here is that we're, uh, this is kind of getting us started, right? This gets us, points us in the right direction of how we can start to really think about how we use this in some interesting way. So that's what I want to get you started with. That's one of the kind of things I want, wanted you to think about. 
We could build um, much more complicated things, right? We, we might think about how do we display multiple cities simultaneously? And how do we display them this way or this way? And in fact, if we look at an example of that, we could see that one of the ways that we might think about handling that would look something like this. All right, so in this case, we've got several different cities that we could select from. So we can see them all lined up here. Similarly, we can see us roll through all of the different cities kind of together. So a sense of how they change in time. Or we could look at what, they, uh, what their data looks like all stacked against one another, right? Los Angeles is one of my favorites. It's like uh, never changing. <laughs> it's the eternal par paradise. It is LA, uh, depending on how you feel about LA. So these are all variations, again, on this very simple theme that we started with, which was just how do we take something like temperature and think about how it shows us a high and a low. And I've got to make an aesthetic choice about how I'm making meaning out of that, how I'm extracting meaning from those numbers. And then use a little bit of uh, thinking and fiddling to put together something that allowed me to really demonstrate uh, how I'm seeing the world. Because again, kind of at the heart of what I want you to think about in this course is how are you demonstrating, how are you showing the world, how you, can, how you think about it, how you construct it. What's a mental model that you've built for the outside world and numbers and values and how do you share that um, and share what it represents with other people. And I think that programming is an es uh, especially powerful way for us to do that. And I can't wait to see what you guys are going to build. All right. Happy programming, everybody.